Hi, and welcome to Master of Manifestation. This is lesson four. Today, we're going to talk about elevating your thought and speech and then translating that into action. In lesson three, which was last week's lesson, you were to do the following exercises. Uh, number one, you were supposed to, or, or attempt to, or think about at least, decluttering your home, clean it, throw things away, set a day and a time and absolutely follow through. And if you didn't follow through, you're supposed to write it down. And this process is going to be the thing that shows you your power of commitment to yourself. And when you commit to yourself, you are able to then commit to others and truly follow through. And it also shows you how thoroughly you applied yourself to a task. So what happens? You become self-aware. The exercise that was the second exercise was drinking more water, figuring out what worked for you. Was it eight glasses a day, half a gallon, you know, two large smart, smart waters, whatever. Um, because everybody's different. However, they say you're supposed to drink eight glasses of water. I think it's 16 ounces um, every day. Why is this? Because hydration regulates your body's temperature. It keeps your joints lubricated. It helps prevent infection because it is washing and using your urinary system to, it's sort of like a, they, it cleanses itself as it passes through the kidneys and then into your bladder and then out of your body. The other thing that hydration does is it regulates your body temp. Well, I said that regulates your body temperature, but it delivers nutrients to the cells and it keeps the organs functioning properly. So if you're well hydrated, it improves your sleep quality. It imp improves your thinking, your cognition, and it also improves your mood. And so does exercise and so does breath. And so I had somebody say to me, well, does decluttering my home count as exercise? Sure, as long as you started decluttering your home and you were moving, sure. And that came to exercise three, move, get up, get out, get off the couch, turn off Netflix, turn off the TV. I don't care if it's five minutes of walking, do it every day. Because as you exhale and as you sweat from moving, you're eliminating waste from your body via the urinary system. So what does drinking water do? It removes the toxins because your body needs to, in other words, work, move, sweat. It is releasing that body through your pores, through your bladder and then it needs to be replaced and replenish. So it's a constant cleansing of your body so that not just your body functions optimally, but so that your mind does as well. It all works together. So fluid intake helps your mood and your productivity. Then we had the practicing of meditation. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But when you start to pay attention to yourself and you start to get into the habits of doing things that are positive for you, it doesn't sound so overwhelming like, oh my God, I got to do this and then I got to do that. That's why we can program our smartphone to tell us what we can do and when we can do it. Drop what we're doing if you know it's not having anything to do with taking care of kids or, or taking care of someone or something um, and then get to that and do it. So the other one was practicing meditation in the form of turning inward or prayer. So it's about focusing again on self. It's an awareness of your mind, of what you're thinking, of what you feel. And you can even do that while you are walking and exercising or drinking your water, but it's about remaining silent. It's about turning within. This practice is, is to help you know your mind better. And all of these exercises work together. Hydration is very important to your body's health. Breath calms the mind and the body and the nervous system. And all of that works in conjunction with movement and the hydration. You must breathe properly while you're exercising or you wind up tensing your body. And breath actually eliminates and helps you move through strenuous exercise and it clears your mind. You are 
actually moisturizing your oxygen. That's actually a thing. So question, did you begin to change your routine at all? Did you just think about these things? Were there things that you followed through on and things that you did not? And if you didn't, write them down. And if you did, write those down. And you'll begin to look at the balance between what I did do, what I didn't do, and you'll get some more clarity about why you want to do some things, why you don't want to do others. And then you can create a discipline to say, these might not be things that I want to do. They're things that I resist doing. But if I can think about this in a positive way, I know that I'm going to be removing and decluttering or I know that I'm going to be moving my body and I know it's going to respond. I know that if I drink water, I know that if I move, I know that if I think about self and breathe, my life will change. So the very first thing we want to do is get you to focus on self. Most of us are so caught up looking at our smartphones or our computers or the TV or Netflix and looking at what other people are doing, thinking that that's our life. It's not. That's just something that you're observing and then you may choose to participate in. But is that the life that you want? Is that the life that makes you happy? In this lesson, we're talking about how to create. That's what lesson four is about. And what we've been talking about in the last three lessons, it doesn't sound super sexy because we're not just jumping into creation. We're not just repeating affirmations that somebody else created for us. We're not just listening to music thinking, oh my God, we're going to change our mind. So it's not super sexy, but it's super powerful. And what we're going to begin with today is your word. And your word is your wand. Your word is your will. Your words are filled with power and intention, or when they are filled with power and intention, focused intention. It's what you will. It's what you create. And so people will say, well, I, you know, you're talking all the time and you don't even recognize that you're having an inner conversation with yourself all the time. You're thinking thoughts all the time. And this is running in the background, creating the same scenarios for you. So in order to create something new, you have to pay attention to your words. And what does this mean? Why is there power in your word? This means that your word is what you are consciously intending, not the unconscious wheel in the background constantly repeating things to you. So what you intend, you create in this world. It's what you believe, not what you think. And what you become aware of when you become more self-aware are the things that you say to yourself, the words that you release into the ether. And so the vibration and sound that is released from your throat and your breath. And this is how breath is part of creation. And without knowing it, you use it as you speak, because you're exhaling as you speak. We typically aren't inhaling when we're speaking to someone. And I know it's very well known the word abracadabra means, as I speak, I create. So when you make a statement or a commitment and you do not follow through with it, for yourself or for others, the energy and the vibration that created the movement and resonates in the airwaves is your bond. It's an agreement that you are making with yourself or you make with another. And in a sense, it's also what you're saying to the universe. You're saying, I'm going to do this. I commit to this. This is my will. And then you're saying to someone else, yes, I agree to that. What are you doing? You are saying, I am a co-creator. And when you're co-creating with the power that is the all, with the creator, the isness, when you don't follow through or when you decide that you've changed your mind and you don't want to do what it was that you committed to, it says that you're not committed, that your will, your drive, your desire is weak and your mind has changed. And it's responding as if, yeah, I I'm committed, but I really didn't want to do it or I'm committed, but so what? I changed my mind. 
you let yourself down, you let the other person down. But most of all, your energy says, I make commitments that I don't really intend to keep. I use my power, my word, my wand in a way that's not meaningful. I don't really say what I mean. So now I want you to think about saying what you mean. And this is what you're beginning to establish about yourself. I'm aware of what I'm doing. And so this is about saying what you mean. And if you are absolutely not sure that you want to commit to something and you catch yourself committing, stop and say, hey, wait a second. I have a tendency to commit to things that I, and I overcommit. And I don't want to do that to you because I don't want to hurt our friendship. Or I really want to do this, but it, maybe it's not a priority for you on these days. Maybe this is something that's a lower priority. And so don't hold somebody up. You don't want to pull out on them because you're not going to want people to pull out on you. And the biggest of all is you don't want to pull out on yourself. So this lesson is about paying attention to your words and making what you say very powerful by uniting your thought, your breath, energy, and volition, or your will to the absolute creative force. Now get your pen and pencil and paper out or whatever you want to use and write down some reflective answers to the following questions. The first question, and these are pretty long, so, you know, this is like workbook stuff. Dig in, get comfortable. What is your inner dialogue about yourself? In other words, what is your self-talk? What kind of conversation is running in the background of your mind? Trust me, there is a conversation and usually it's just a bunch of noise. Because if you sit and listen to it for a few hours this evening, you're going to be astonished. The mind is loud and messy and it never stops talking. Keep this paper out and write this down tonight. Pay attention to yourself. Turn off Netflix or whatever you watch. Listen to the chattering mind. When you do recognize it, you can consciously quiet it. When I first listened to my mind, I said, oh my God, do you hear that? And the person that was with me said, hear what? And I said, it's my mind. It doesn't shut up. You should hear the stuff it's saying. And it, you pick up things in the ether anyway, and your body, your antenna are, are picking that up. And you, you, you hear things that you're not even thinking about. That mind is constantly chattering. And when you begin to discipline yourself, in a kind way, discipline yourself, you can begin to say, those are not my thoughts. They are not the thoughts that I am consciously choosing. That is background noise. And you need to shut down and shut it off. And it will. And it begins to become really fun because you think to yourself, wow, this is a trip, but you have control over it. So the second thing you're going to do is note that we're always looking at ourselves. And in doing so, you should be seeing that everything begins with you, even though it feels like it's outside of you. It begins with how you perceive and react to what is happening outside of you. And a lot of the things that you are picking up are things that you do not see, but your eyes might see. Your consciousness picks up. And paying attention to yourself in self-awareness makes you very powerful because we begin to apply these practices of expanding your consciousness. And when you are expanding what you are conscious of, this is a very important element of manifestation. Expanding your consciousness causes you to begin to become aware of more. In order to create more, you must be conscious of more and recognize the expansion happens within you. When you are mired down in the same old, same old, you cannot perceive more. 
So we begin to become aware of, wow, this is what I'm thinking. And if you begin to pay attention to that and you say, no, that's not what I want to think. Those are not my thoughts. This is where I, I'm headed. This is my intention. Now you begin to expand into what you want, not staying stuck in more of what you don't want because you are unconsciously running a program. So the third thing that we notice, and you're going to start to see how this all works together, is your word is very closely related to all of this, and it cannot be extracted from your thoughts. Try thinking a thought without a word. Think a thought right now without a word. You, you are relating something to it. You think, I came up with the picture of a bird in my mind. Okay, but you just named it. You're always naming something because your mind is always filtering and managing and downloading the information to make some semblance of your outer reality. The mind is a computer that sequences your sensory perception of what you perceive on the outside. So what are we actually doing? We are working to create new perception. And when your mind computes those sequences, your perception expands. And when you are perceiving an expanded reality, it means you are opening to more. And so this is why we pay attention to our old thoughts. And trust me, it's really interesting. It's fun. Because in self-awareness, and this is the fourth thing, we are able to perceive differently in perceiving things differently. How about that? We create a new reality, a reality that is in alignment with what we want, but we have to be aware of what it is that we think. What is it that we say? And underneath all this are our beliefs. This is where you say, oh my God, I never knew that I believed that. And we can begin to make these changes by making our word law. When your word becomes law, what does the universe do? It follows the intention. It follows the instructions. It follows the information. When you sequence, that is information. It means it creates a form. And the universe is always listening. So when you are completely in alignment with your word, with what you are intending, the universe shows up and boom, that's how you create. So you can see some of the reasons that things don't happen for you right away is because you aren't paying attention to self and you're not expanding. Okay, number five, meditation is an expansion of consciousness. Why? Because it is the channeling of spiritual energy. So when we meditate, we focus on our breath. When we focus on our breath, it calms our mind. When our mind is calm, our mind is quiet. And when your mind is quiet, you can channel and communicate and listen to something so much greater than you could ever have imagined. I call it the God force. You call it whatever you want. Fill in the blank. That is expanding consciousness because you're paying attention to how you use your word. You're paying attention to the chatter in your mind. Those are words. You shut that down. Now you're going to pay attention to how do I give my word? Who do I give my word to? How do I follow through with what it is that I commit to? And when I pay attention and I am aware of self, I'm going to find my strengths and my weaknesses. And that's why we do these exercises because we strengthen what is weak within us. And sometimes the things that are strong within us, we have to weaken because they're not good for us. They're keeping us stuck and outside of the idea that we're not the creator when we are. So we take full responsibility for self. Now, in the silence of meditation, you're finding the God force, the spark of the force that is within you. So now what, what are you going to do? Many people say, well, I can't meditate. Okay, great. You can choose to become self-aware, though. You can choose to pay attention to what you give your thought to. You can choose to pay attention to what you're feeling emotionally. And you can certainly choose to not commit to something that you're not truly interested in doing or you have no intention of following through on. 
So that's part of word intention and will. And in doing that, you are disciplining self, you're becoming more powerful. So if you tell yourself, I'm going to do the dishes after I eat dinner, or I'm going to go clean the house, or I'm going to go on a run, I'm going to get up early, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to become more self aware, follow through, make your word law, no excuses, just do it. For those of us who say we're going to do it later or that we're too tired, push through and do it anyway. Your word is your will. Sear that into your brain. These small little tweaks that you're making each week in each lesson add up to huge changes in these months. So you'll see your power, but you have to do the work. Let me put it like this. When you set your intention to have a specific thing or a relationship, do you or would you like it if the universe said, I don't feel like it. I'm too tired. I don't want to do it right now. It probably feels that way anyway, because the universe is reflecting back to you what we talked about originally, your commitment and how firmly you commit. You see, the universe is always listening. It's alive and it lives around you. It will never abandon you. But if your manifestations are a hit and miss, then begin with the self-discipline and the self-guidance to make the small self-aware change. Pay attention to what you say to yourself, to the benefits you reap from this practice, because they are immense. And if you don't know if you will want to go because you're too tired, say no. If you, and then if you feel like, well, I, I just left myself out. Well, now you know to say yes and get up and do it. Ask yourself, can you keep it open? Because, boy, if you commit, you better get yourself up and get going. Because when we do, we're usually glad we did because we actually put the thought and effort to follow through and make our word powerful. And when you become powerful, you start to feel pretty good about yourself. And when you feel good about yourself, you attract good things. And lastly, what you speak with your mouth, you create, especially backed by emotion and repeated continuously. And so is this what you want to create? Think about that. And this is why we get control of our mind. We control our feelings and our thoughts by paying attention to inner dialogue and what we say. Half the time, this is running on empty. It's just running. And it just doesn't stop. How we say things and then keep how we say and what we say, keep our word. If you mess up and you hurt another person with your words, go apologize. And then forgive yourself. You'll be glad that you did. Because when you strike out at another, you know you're only striking out at yourself. Apologize then apologize to yourself. Forgive yourself. And if the other person strikes back, apologize to them for that, for provoking, and forgive them too. Get that into your brain and into the very essence of your being. That by paying attention to what you say and being careful with your promises and commitments, because your mind holds more data than you're aware of. And the goal is to attain a higher consciousness, to gain access to levels of self that you didn't know were there. So we are on a journey of discovering self and the expansiveness of self, which is done through self-awareness, whether meditation or quieting your mind. Meditation is a tool to use. You can do it walking in the woods, through the streets or the city, or in your living room, listening to Mozart. You can do it in silence. Find your place, find your peace, find your mind, and then quiet it by harnessing the noise and directing it to do your will, not vice versa. Make your will your law. These disciplines, I'm telling you, can be lonely. Change comes really quickly. And when your friends and family members see the change, and you see the change, and the more self-aware you are, the more powerful you become by knowing that you have the power to run the show, not the show run you and stealing all your power. So you make the decision to do this alone. Work on it silently and alone. It can be isolating sometimes. You know, you can have people chide you and try and needle you and get under your skin and provoke you to react and remind you of how you used to be in the past. And you have to quiet that too. Admit it to yourself. Maybe I was. Maybe that's their perception. But I'm not that now. And I'm not going to be that in the future. 
Mental isolation, silence, and solitude is your time to think, to plan, to escape the noise, to escape the chaos, to escape the demands of the outside world, to make the rules, to say this is how it's going to be, and to own that deeply, and to follow through. Don't tell people what you're doing. Just change. They'll see it. They'll know it. And it might feel lonely. And if you've got a problem being alone, that has to change. Because in the end, it's all about you, even though you're going to be surrounded by others, even though you help others and others help you, because there is an interdependency in this world. But you have to prepare and you have to commit to understanding self. And with that, it brings confidence. Your commitment is to get a grip on your emotions, on your mind. And your mind is in partnership with the voices in your head. Is that the partnership that you want to have? Because if fear or doubt causes you to falter, most likely, so will your power to firmly create what you want. And that's okay. If you're willing to be aware that it is self, it is mind, it is your commitment. So let's take the reins back and let's control the power and steer it to what we want to see and expand our consciousness. So this week, your lesson is to pay attention to what it is that you say to yourself, how you commit and how you don't commit and why you don't want to and what you're thinking and what scares you from moving forward. Why do you have doubt? Where does the doubt come from? Or just plain listening to the chattering mind. It'll blow you away to a point where you say, "Uh uh-uh, that's going to stop. Don't be afraid of it. Face it and tell it, you're the boss. You're the king or the queen of this kingdom. And this is how we talk to the king or queen of this kingdom. And when you start to talk to yourself in a way that is positive, the world will reflect that on the outside. So until next week, thank you for checking in and listening and make the world a better place.